Hey gang. Long time no see. It's me. It's Shannon. It's Sheepless Needles. Vegan podcast. Not about being vegan. Where we do all sorts of fun stuff. We talk about knitting. We talk about gaming. We talk about iced coffee. We talk about life. So grab yourself a beverage. A project. Pull up a chair. Hang out. It's been a while. I've been absentee. I'm good. Sometimes life kicks you in the balls and you gotta take a step back. That's what I did, but I'm back. So, I am so out of practice. I just sat here and recorded the entire podcast and looked down and realized I never clicked record. So this could be a little bit of a train wreck, but it'll be a quicker version because I don't feel like sitting here that long. Okay, you guys, I took some time off. Let's just get into it real quick. This is, what are you doing, Maggie? Can you see, you can't see her, she's right. Okay, you're not drinking my coffee. Okay. If you're gonna sit there, sit there. This is very precarious. There's a lot of stuff on my desk and we all know cats are, are like Newton. They like gravity. Don't look at me like that. Okay, so you guys, I took some time off. I needed to take a step back. Sometimes the world can make you feel like a shithead and that's kind of where I was at and I didn't want to share that um, because I don't feel like you need to feel like you're a shithead via me feeling like a shithead. So I took some, I took some well needed, what are you doing? Can you just, okay, hang on. No, do not step on, okay, hang on. I gotta get Maggie, cause she's gonna, what are you, oh, oh, okay, all right. Do you wanna get in my lap? Okay, oh, girlfriend. Sometimes, <laughs> Maggie's doing really well, you just can't see her, here she, there she is. Uh, but sometimes she doesn't know where she is and when she doesn't know where she is, she starts crying really loud. It's a little bit heartbreaking, so I just try to be patient with her and let her do whatever she wants to do, as long as it doesn't involve peeing on me or our bed. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I have no idea what I was talking about. So anyway, whatever. Life had kicked me in the ass. I'm back. Um, yeah, I... I think we all know the world at large is a little bit crazy and there's a lot of current events that can bring us down and I'm just trying to take time to make sure that I am taking care of myself via physically, via mentally, taking part in activities that don't worsen my viewpoint on life. <laughs> um, I did watch a really interesting, well I don't want to say it was really interesting, I watched a doc. Okay, I don't have really a judgment on the quality of this documentary, but when I talk about it, a lot of people will have opinions because of the person who did it. So it was called the Vegan Punk Rock Documentary or the Punk Rock Vegan Documentary. It was by Moby. And I know that Moby is problematic for some people for a couple reasons. I don't have an opinion on Moby one way or the other, and I try to kind of like gauge my judgment on on how people behave so I jury out on how I actually feel about Moby if you don't know what I'm talking about I don't you can look it up on the internet um, it doesn't matter anyway he filmed a documentary about early 80s mid 80s punk rock bands and the vegan movement and it particularly in terms of the American side of things and in it because I kind of grew up in that era and I would say not so much in the early 80s because I was probably a little too young but mid to late 80s absolutely so like a lot of the bands that he interviewed I had seen live like Youth of Today and a couple other bands so it was good to see these interviews and it was good to realize that those people are still politically active, they're still vegan, all of all of that stuff. So in that sense, if you're somebody who likes punk rock music, 
it's a good watch. Um, but one of the things that happened in it, and I, again, this is one of those areas where I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this, but he interviewed Kat Von D. And again, that's another problematic person um, for several reasons. And again, jury out. I'm not going to sit in judgment of people. I did find it interesting. There were two comments she made that, that kind of sat with me. And one was that, and it made me laugh because I was like, oh, you don't know the room. Um, she was talking about how when she thinks about veganism, she thinks about science and, you know, how it's better for you. And I thought, okay, aren't you the person that's like anti-vax? So it was, that part was very confusing to me and nothing was mentioned about vaccinations or anything. And in fact, nothing was really mentioned about medical, the medical side of veganism, like animal testing and things like that. It was more about factory farming. So when she started talking, I was like, I laughed a little bit because I was like, okay, I don't, I'm very confused by this. But then I thought, okay, I don't know if this was filmed pre that or post that the vaccination issue. And again, I don't, whether she vaccinates her child or not is not any concern or business. Well, it is a concern of mine because I don't want non-vaccinated kids going to school with, you know what I mean? Like we don't need to be spreading disease. So I, I take that back. But the other thing that she said that actually resonated and spoke truth to me was that sometimes being vegan you're in a constant state of mourning, that you're in a constant state of grief. And that really struck me as being 100% true. And part of being vegan, hang on, Maggie, is navigating that, right? It's navigating how to not let the oppressiveness or the gravity of reality weigh you to the point where you're not able to act or move forward. It's about taking that grief or that bleakness and shining a light on it, right? So anyway, regardless how you feel about Moby or Kat Von D, if you're interested in punk rock and veganism and the marriage of the two, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, I just threw it on in the background while I was working, so I wasn't, like, intently watching it. I will say the parts of it that Moby wasn't in, I, and this is going to sound horrible, I far enjoyed far better than the parts where he was. So I, do I give it an A+, plus? no. Do I give it, like, a C? Yeah. And it was fun, so... Anyway, I watched that and I think that maybe partly why I was taking a break was I was feeling really weighted down by some things that have been going on. And I just want to let everybody know it's okay to feel that way and that as vegans, we're going to have good days, we're going to have bad days, but we're here for each other. And it's always good to remember that even though someone can be problematic, it doesn't mean that their opinion is completely, it's not black and white, right? Like Kat Von D can be anti-vax, but also make a good point about veganism. That can exist. We're not in a vacuum. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that we all need to remember outside of veganism, within veganism, is that opinions are just opinions and they don't need to be treated as fact. Boom. Okay, so that's that. So what have I been spending my time doing, you guys, because I haven't been knitting? I lost the mojo, and that's okay, because I think, you guys, the mojo's on its way back. You better look out, because you know why. You know my, my dear, dear, dear spirit human, <laughs> Stephen West, his MCAL is starting in October, this year, it is a four-color MCAL mystery knit-along. Um, it's called Geo Gradient. So it's a four-color gradient where once a week he'll drop a clue, yada, yada, yada. If you are interested, you don't have to be, but if you're interested, I am going to do my annual. And by my annual, I mean the second time I've ever done it. <laughs> um, 
my annual MCAL vlog series. So it will be a five to six video series that will be shorter videos or shorter YouTube chichas. And I will have a separate playlist for it. I want to separate it from the podcast so that there won't be spoilers on the podcast in case people are watching this and that I can talk freely on the MCAL about the MCAL. So look for that in your feed coming up in October. And I think that's going to bring my mojo back. Because I know what's not going to bring my mojo back is the cat hair that is stuck on my upper lip right now. So when I'm talking, I can feel it. You guys, it's so annoying. This is what happens when you have cats and rabbits. You get hair everywhere. I am literally pulling hairs out of my eye. There's probably hair flying in here. Oh my God. Sidebar note. Two weeks ago, I attempted to film a podcast. Attempted. It was a great podcast until we went to edit it. And it was like a snowstorm of hair. And I'm not kidding. Hey, Mr. Editor, if you can put in like 30 seconds of the snowstorm footage of all the hair flying through the air, this little knitter here has lost her mojo. So you guys, you would think that I live in the dirtiest home on the planet and I don't. It's just everybody, rabbits are molting, cats are shedding. Oh my God. And I had cleaned up my closet. So this room was a little bit dusty. I literally looked like I was in a snow globe and we had to pitch the whole thing. So I don't know why I was talking about that now. Oh, the cat hair on my lip. Um, okay, so mojo incoming. That's all I'm saying. So everybody, you know, calisthenics, get ready. It's on. But in lieu of that, of me not knitting, you got... <laughs> Shannon, what have you been spending your time doing? Well, watching way too much on YouTube... But that's another story. You guys, Baldur's Gate 3, holy shizoli. Just go buy the game. If you have a console, if you have a PC, go buy it. You will love it. It is so much fun. I, I love it. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a level six rogue. I'm a tiefling. My name is Vera. Mr. Editor plays a character named Endel. He's a druid. He's level six too. We go out with Shadowheart and Karlak. And if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you will as soon as you play the stupid game. And then you're going to be like, Shannon, I hate you because I, I am never going to do anything else with my life except play this game. I hear you. Cheers. Iced coffee today, by the way. I told you all about it in the first time I tr thought I was recording when I wasn't recording. Sorry. It's just iced coffee. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I'm such a dork. Okay, you guys. Oh, Baldur's Gate. Just, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. It's so good. It's so, it, is, it is like eons different and better than Diablo 4. Totally different type of game. Totally different type of game. But I will say I've not touched Diablo 4. So that if that tells you anything. In fact, I haven't touched any other game. I haven't been playing Elden Ring. I haven't been playing Diablo. Haven't played Skyrim. Haven't played ESO. It's only been Baldur's Gate. So, yeah. So good. The other thing, because I don't know about you, but I work on a computer during the day. So, like, eight hours a day. This My workstation is yonder ho. Um... I don't want to spend all day staring at computer monitors. So I was like, okay, girl, you got to find something other than Baldur's Gate to fill your gaming necessities. And I did. I picked back up Arkham Horror, the living card game. If you are not familiar with this or with living card games, it's basically a tabletop game that uses a deck of cards. And in Arkham Horror, it's based off the Cthulhu mythos. So H.P. Lovecraft. I love that type of horror. So it is a deck building scenario based game. Um, I will leave links in the show notes if you're interested in learning about it. It is. I love this game so much. Mr. Editor, you can even put up here. How much does Shannon love Arkham Horror? That much. Um, 
it is just such a great game. And there's different ways you can play it. You can play, there's scenario setups. I don't want to get, I like, I'm not going to be an Arkham Horror channel and I'm not going to explain it well. So just go check it out in the show notes. The thing I do like about, I will say really quickly, with it being a card-based game, essentially you can play it by yourself. You can solo this. And I have played it solo and it is really fun. Um, but it's, you can also play with other people. It is one of those games where you can, it's an either or, where you can play it as a standalone game that'll take 30 minutes to two hours, depending. Or you can play it, like there's different, like there's campaigns. And within the campaigns, you buy a campaign set. There's probably eight to 10 scenarios. And each scenario is a gaming session. So, you know, if you're just going to play one scenario or one, one part of the campaign a weekend, like once a week, a campaign expansion will last you to almost two months, right? So it's, it's good in the sense that you can play it that way where it's going to be a story that builds on itself across the eight scenarios or you can just play a scenario as a one shot. Like you can grab a scenario out of the box and be like, I just want to play this. I don't want to, I, maybe I'll pick this, whatever. So each scenario can literally take anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. I don't think we've ever had one go over an hour and a half. Um, but it's a really great way to spend a night with, with friends or even if, if you're on your own and you don't want to be watching TV, but you kind of want to be spooky. It, dude, it scratches that itch. The other thing I like about it is that it's deck building. So you have an investigator that you play and you build an investigator deck and there's guides on how to build your deck. All the cards come with it. So you're not like, you don't need to worry about that. Um, it's just so much fun. It's, and it's, oh, by the way, it's brutal. We play on the easy standard mode and like barely make it out alive, barely. So it is not a game that you like win, but it is a cooperative game. So if you're playing with other people, you're not playing against the other people at the table like you would with Monopoly. You're playing with them to beat a larger enemy. And I will say this, I love cooperative games. I think they're the only games I can play because I'm a sore loser. <laughs> Listen, you gotta know your strong points, you gotta know your weak points. I am a sore loser, I don't like losing. So if I'm playing like a non-cooperative game, like something where it's Steve or Mr. Editor and I against each other, then we just start a big fight and it's not fun. That's why I like Monopoly. Like I think I even have a podcast that I said, don't play Monopoly when you're drunk or something. But I really hold fast to that. Like there are some games that can break up a marriage and I'm just not, or a friendship and that's not what I'm about. So cooperative games are what I always will recommend and Arkham Horror is a cooperative game. So I will leave it in the show notes. You go check it out. But literally, that's what I've been spending my time doing. So, there you have it. For me to get my mojo back into knitting, I needed Mr. West to come out with his MCAL. But the other thing that happened, which I was like, wow, the timing on this couldn't have been more perfect, was, I don't know if you remember, way back when, I placed an order with Terrapin Fiberworks. I will leave it in the show notes. Great yarn dyer. Um, for their Icelandic collection. I did not think it was going to be here until late October. So I was like, oh, it won't be here for the MCAL, but that's okay. Because I got MCAL yarn out of my stash, which I'm pointing over there like you know what I'm talking about. My stash is in my closet. Okay, so anyway, I just want to show you these fabulous yarns that came because now I don't know what I'm going to pick for the MCAL. So if you see any of these yarns and you're like, girl, you need to, that's what you need to do for the MCAL. Here's what we're gonna do. This is number one. So just write down the number and then put it in, the, like if you're like, you need that. Now it's a gradient, so you want it to be, you know what I'm saying. All right, so this is number one. Now this, all of the yarn that I purchased, I'm fairly sure I did all Chesapeake fingering, which is 100% organic cotton, but I'll check the tags as we go along. This is the colorway uh, Reykjavik. You guys, come on. Get the tag out of the way, sorry. Look how beautiful that is. Now, this is a very un-Shannon colorway. 
right? But when I think about doing shawls and I need a lighter color and I can pull from this, like I could pull out the blue, I could pull out the russet, I could pull out the gold. You guys love this. All right, that's number one. You ready for number two? Number two. Now, it's weird. The curtain behind me is sea foam. This is far more blue. And it's actually more of a slate. I think my lighting's a little off, but that's okay. But let me get that out of the way. This is basalt or basalt. I don't know how to pronounce anything. We know that about me. Oh, you guys, come on. Okay, that's number two. Number three. Okay, I gotta put my glasses on, I can't see. <laughs> Sorry for any, oh my God, oh my God, you guys, come on. What in the farfig nougan? This is so beautiful. All right, so this is, I can't even, I don't even know what this is. Hilda folk? I don't know. Number three is beautiful. Like, that's all we need to know. And I don't know if I can, can you see that? There you go. That's what that is. Okay. Number four, Midnight Sun. Sorry, I was staring at the monitor and not you. Midnight Sun. <laughs> I like to look at it in the monitor too while I'm showing you. You guys, oh my God, look at, come on. That's my hair. Okay, so that's number four. Number five is Thingabalier. Again, you guys. It's like a, look, look at this. Three and four. Huh. Look at that. Wait, look at that. Oh. Oh, you guys, am I the only person that has this reaction to yarn? <laughs> All right, number six. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, six, I can count. Sagas. Um, hello, this is like bittersweet chocolate on crack. I, what? And then, wait. And then, wait, oh my God. And then, okay, wait. And then, I mean, come on, seriously? I got two of those, by the way. <laughs> now, the one I wish I had just gotten a boatload of and I didn't is the last one called Catla. You guys. So here, here's my issue. I know I want to do this. I think I want to do this. All right. So the question is, do I? You see what I'm saying? Do we do? I don't know, you guys. I don't. I don't even know. Or, or, wait for it. Oh, shiitakes. You guys, come on. All right, so. One, two, three, four, five, I hope I did those in the right order, <laughs> six, I don't think I did, just, you know, say the green one, <laughs> I don't know, you guys, I don't know what I'm going to do, this is a knitter's problem, right, it's a good problem to have, um, I can't tell you how much I love Terrapin Fiberworks, and I, again, she has no idea. I mean, I don't even think she knows I exist or that this podcast is a thing or that I'm even talking about her. So definitely go check her out. Is it 
um, inexpensive yarn. No, this is like treat yourself yarn. Um, and this is like my only substantial yarn purchase that I will make all year. Because this was the year that I was trying only to knit out of my stash. But then I saw the collection. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to get on that. I don't need to justify my purchase, <laughs> but I need to justify my purchase. Uh, go, go check it out. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes the stash won't have what you need and you need to go elsewhere. So I will report back on what I end up choosing. You Listen, if you want to know what I end up choosing, first of all, vote. Vote in the comments. And if you want to see where I end up, you're going to have to go check out the MCAL vlog that I'm going to do. I'm going to sucker you in one way or the other. And that's it. That's all I got for you. So, oh, I forgot to tell you guys I cut my hair. I'm sure you noticed. I cut off all my hair. Now, you did miss a glorious haircut, and I will have Mr. Editor put a photo up here. Yes, that is a mullet that was inspired by Yolandi. Basir, I think is her name. You guys, I loved it. It was a little bit too eye-catching, and I was a little concerned that I might not be able to go into the office. <laughs> because there's this weird... Like, I don't know about you. I'm trying to make sure that the people who bought my company out that I work for, that they know that I'm serious and that I am functional and productive and an asset for them to have. And I don't want my hair to be something that they use as a reason that I'm not. And I think it sucks that people do that, but that's the reality. Um, I think anybody who is other than the mainstream, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I think that it's so stupid to care about something like that. Um, but people do. So I cut it off because, one, one, I loved it. But then I was like, how am I growing this out? Because you know I don't keep the same style for very long. And I couldn't figure out how to grow it out without it being a hot mess. I was like, I'm cutting it off. Which I wanted to do anyway. Because I like, I just prefer having shorter hair. So anyway, you missed colors. You missed haircuts. You missed, that's, that's I, I deprived you of that journey. I'm back. Now you're going to have to enjoy this. And whatever comes in the future. I think I may bleach and dye it again. I don't know whatever you don't care oh yes so yeah you know the other thing I think I need to do you know what I think we all need to do I think we all need to take a moment I think it's time I think it's time for Mr. Spader <laughs> We all need a little James Spader. Come on. That's it. That's all I got. So thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, this is me. <laughs> Normally I have knitting to show you. Didn't this time. If you're returning, oh my God, thanks for being patient. Thank you for coming back and keep coming back. Because we need community, right? I do, before we part ways, kind viewer, I had someone, and you know who you are in the south of France, uh, leave me one of the nicest comments I've ever gotten. And, and I get, first of all, I don't think I've ever gotten a negative comment or one that upset me. I get comments that make me think, but th they don't upset me. This one was heartfelt, and it was exactly what I needed to hear at the exact time I needed to hear it. Funny how the universe will drop that on you sometimes. I just want to let you know, you know who you are. Thank you, because your words, I really needed them, and they really helped. So I'm really happy that you're knitting shawls. I'm really happy I turned you into a Stephen West fanatic. Go and share that. I know you're sharing that with the world, so you keep doing that. 
So thank you. And I guess what I would say is any time that we have the capability to tell someone how they affect us in a positive way, um, do it. Because you never know what someone's going through and how just the encouragement or the compliment or the positivity can really help propel someone forward and pull them out of something. And yeah, so please, please, please make sure that you talk to people. Don't keep things inside. Like I know that sometimes you just need someone, you just need positivity from a stranger, right? Like it could just be a smile. It could be saying hello to someone because you might be the only person that talks to that person that entire day, right? Um, and I always try to think about like, how can I, how can I help other people in the way that this person in their comment helped me? And I guess the way that I want to say that is, to encourage all of us to do that more often is if you see something and you like it, let somebody know you like it. Like, obviously, don't be creepy. Don't be a creeper. Don't be weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for that. So thank you. And I will be back. You guys, I'm going to try to do bi-weekly. We may end up once a month. October is going to be a little bit weird. It probably will just be one for October because of the MCAL series. But maybe what I'll do is do the MCAL series and just jump on for like 10 to 15 minutes, you know, sometime mid-October and kind of talk about whatever else is going on. I don't know that I'm going to knit two things at once during the MCAL. I did that last year. I think I want to give myself a little bit of a break. So we'll see. But fingers crossed. So if you're going to do the MCAL, leave it in the show notes. I will look for you to be following me on my other thing. <laughs> and if you guys pick up Arkham Horror, oh my God, let me know. Or if you pick up Baldur's Gate 3, what are you playing? Who are you? How crazy are you? And more, more so than that, what's your hairstyle? I've got little buns and braids. I'm just saying. If I can get a screenshot of my character, I will have Mr. Editor put it up here. I'm not sure how to do that. We'll figure it out. I know. You would think I would know how to do a screenshot. Don't ask. I always have to look up stuff. So <laughs> anyway, you guys, take care of yourselves so you can take care of one another. Love yourself so you can love one another. What you doing back there, Maggie? You got something to say? Can you? There she is. Look, you guys. What are you talking about? Nope, she's coming over. Anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Toodles.